right, guys, spin on across from Mark to Mark here. Let's go straight to our What's Up in the NBA topic. James, what do we got? Uh, we're talking about the rookie race. Who do you think is the rookie of the year right now? Guys, I got to go with my boy Luka Doncic. Yeah. You see what he's doing in Dallas? Yeah. I feel like it, it's, it's I, I was always telling my buddies that Luka was going to come in and he was going to set the NBA on fire. Yeah. I didn't think he'd actually do it to this extent. And, yeah. you know, there's games where he's getting 30 points, 11 assists. Triple doubles. Triple doubles, oh, man. Oh like, I don't know about you guys, but Luke is yeah. my MVP. Or my, not my MVP, but, like, the rookie he's, rookie my, of the year. he's my rookie of the year for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a close race. I'm not going to lie. Because, um, well, I'm for, and the edge is Luca right now because he has four tri- triple double. It's not, yeah. like, triple double, like, 10, 10, 10. He's 30, 10, and 11 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But Trey Young is very, like, he's on a tear right now. You know what's funny, though? Yeah. It's, like, Trey Young... He started getting better as soon as Luca yeah. had the lock for MVP. I think yeah. it was, it was you know? like an ego trade, like he's saying. Yeah. What, like people are saying that uh, that trade was awful for yeah. Atlanta Hawks. I'm like, let me show you. Let me show yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, between the two players, what have, what have you guys been impressed the most about their game? Like for Luca and for Trey, what be something that you've seen about them? That what do you think? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking because Luca is kind of like I said, he's like the baby LeBron. I think mm-hmm. this is this year is kind of like Carmelo and LeBron again. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. For me, that time, I think Carmelo owned that Rookie of the Year because they made the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this time, Luka is on another level because he's scoring points, giving out. And this team is not even that good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compare, like, this team is not even that good. And they traded their center and then uh, Dennis Smith, and he's tearing it up. And, but what, with Trey Young, his, his point average is going crazy. This guy's like 38. 40, 38, and then it's like the last five games. It's, it's, yeah, I I, he reminds yeah. me of like a young Steph Curry. I always yeah. thought of that in university when he was yeah. playing, mm-hmm. was he reminded me of that, that yeah. you know, jump shooter, small guard. Yeah, um, but it's handles. Yeah, yeah he's, got it, he's got it all, but I, I still think Luka's got the edge. I think DeAndre he, yeah. is kind of up there. I think there, he has but, the yeah. same chip on his shoulder when it comes to Steph Curry because yeah. when he was in high school and college, it's like, oh, that's not going to work in college. That's not going to work in NBA. And, and it does. Same, yeah. <laughs> it keeps working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What made you think that the slight edge came to Luca, or what made you think the slight edge was with, with Trey? Is it just the fact that Luca was has been consistently doing it for the whole season, or the fact that Trey is just starting to really show his potential the past three or like in the past three or four weeks? Uh, like for me, Luca is one of those players that's that's like a generational talent. One in, yeah, you exactly. know, you, you exactly. see him rebounding, you see him as, getting assists, but you forget yeah. that he's also like, I want, how tall is he? Six, six eight? eight. Like six, eight he's guard. he's one of those yeah. guards that yeah. is very unguardable. Yeah. And the fact that he's got these step backs that yeah. are just that nah, they, they shouldn't filthy. be going in. Yeah. And yeah, the guy's he's somehow, so young too. Yeah. He's an MVP in the Europe, so it's yeah. like we're like hmm, maybe who knows who if it's gonna work, but we're like. Scratching our head, like, is this gonna work in, in, in NBA? But yeah. we'll see. Even he said that, oh, it's easier to score in NBA than Europe. So, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. That's that's so weird that it's easier to score in the yeah. NBA. Right? Maybe that's. I guess it's yeah. the physicality yeah. there, and then uh, the fact that the refs call differently in, in Europe too. So, uh, what about? I wanted to kind of touch over the fact that I don't know there's just something this trend happening in the NBA the, where a lot of teams or a lot of people kind of does not value the regular season. And so for them, it's either whether you win the championship, whether you, you, you get into the playoffs. So there's this mentality. It's like, oh, if you're not going to make the playoffs, just rest your, your star player. Yeah. Or if, you, um, if you're making in the play, if you're going to be locking in the playoffs, rest your star player. What are your guys' thoughts about that? Like, yeah, so I, I think that initially started with the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, Spurs mm-hmm. Right? So they mm-hmm. sat, I remember this one game before the playoffs. Uh, Popovich sat Ginobili, Duncan, mm-hmm. yeah. and Tony, Tony Parker yeah. all in one game. Yeah. And people that paid tickets for that, they were yeah. just like, Sa- what? what? Yeah. Like, Even I, he says DMP, old. <laughs> yeah. Duncan, remember? It didn't have yeah. any reason. I remember watching yeah. that. No I'm reason like, what? whatsoever. Yeah. Um, oh. And then you, you slowly start to see LeBron. Obviously, he's, he's getting older, so yeah. yeah. you've got to rest him. You've got to make sure yeah. that he's well-rested for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You see Kawhi over in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit different because he only played nine games last year, but this year you know, they have a maintenance plan. Yeah. They want to keep him, obviously, in Toronto. Exactly. Right? So yeah. they don't want to injure him before the playoffs because yeah. hopefully they'll make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it's okay. You look at Anthony Davis right now, I think that's a unique situation as well. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure like, it's, it's one of those situations where you don't want to injure your trade asset, yeah. right? So if, if you go and start playing him for games that really don't mean anything for the New Orleans Pelicans, yeah. why would you do that? 
Yeah. You, you you could have traded him at, for to Lakers yeah, for yeah, exactly. pretty much yeah. everyone on the Lakers <laughs> except yeah, LeBron. Team. But doesn't right? that doesn't that <laughs> lose the integrity of the game now? Where it's like everyone just cares about oh the value of players, where no one's playing for the passion of the game now. It's yeah. just like oh it doesn't matter why you don't need to play. Like you know old school players like Charles Barkley or like Shaq, yeah. players back in the day like. Where is the passion in the game? Where is they will call him soft. Where is, yeah. it's not yeah. so much soft. It's more so like, where is your passion about the game? Are you just playing for the money? Are you just playing because everyone just cares about the chip? Like, are you not enjoying the journey of play, or just not feeling appreciative that you get to play the game that you love? Like, it, it really different. I mean, it really like really different because we're like with Kawhi, without him, they're thirteen and four. Yeah. But when he comes back, he, it's different. Like the ball movement is not the same. Um, Kawhi kind of played the isolation ball, and then with uh, what do you think? Because what, what I think it's like, it's very weird when it comes to Kawhi. Because with Spurs is totally different because they need to rest the old players. But this one is just like we want to baby Kawhi, but at the same time we're doing great without him. Yeah, so I, I mean, so, like, I'm going to look at it as a fan because I've been a Raptors fan since yeah. I was in, what '95 since yeah. the team was was generated. So yeah. it's like. With Kawhi, we brought someone who is one of the top three defensive players in, in the, two in the league. Players, top right? five top, at least. Top five two-way yeah. players, right? Yeah. So it's like you knew he was his injury history last year yeah. and the fact that the Spurs treated him to, to his perspective really badly, yeah. right? So how do you change that when he comes to a city like Toronto, which we know is cold, yeah. we experience it, yeah. right? And Kawhi's not used to that. Yeah. So how do you show him a good time? and ensure that you show him that like we care about your health yeah. right so i think they're doing the right thing there's other situations in the nba with it, with anthony davis and with other players yeah. that that might be a little bit different mm -hmm. but with Kawhi, it's like you want him well rested right yeah. before the playoffs i agree yeah. so, so do, you, do you think that this they're going to be a trend in the future it's not going to ruin the league or it's not going to uh, kind of ruin i think the it's kind of ruining league? the league because mm -hmm. a lot of play like when it comes to other players, oh, just rest them, or oh, we're gonna trade them or something. Because yeah. it, it, now it's even in colleges, coming to college for Zion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're resting this players, oh, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, players are being selfish because we, us fans, we go to the game and watch the game and they're not playing. Yeah. So it really I, depends I, yeah, on, you, know you have to, it, there's yeah. two perspectives. I feel like the NCAA yeah. is a whole different yeah, beast, yeah, right? Because yeah. like these so, players aren't getting paid. Yeah. You know Zion's gonna get millions and yeah. millions of dollars as soon as he gets af out of Duke, yeah. Yeah. right? And it's just like, so you is think it worth you should, it? They should rest them? For, for, for him, his yeah. specific case, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, you could tell that injury was a freak injury. Yeah, yeah. His like, foot came out of his shoe. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. And uh, you, don't, you don't want someone who's considered almost the next LeBron yeah. to, to have an injury ruin before his he even career drafted. before he's even drafted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I guess it, it goes hand in hand. If you're getting paid millions of dollars, right. play. You should not. Right? I play think so, the, yeah. But if, I guess, you know, play it safe if you're in, 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 in uh, college just because of the fact that it can ruin your uh, pro draft prospect and your opportunity, right? I think as a player, you got to be a little selfish because mm -hmm. you know what's yeah. on the line. I agree. As, as, an, as a GM, you got to think differently. It's like, you yeah. know you want either want your team to win or like in the Pelicans case you want them to lose in a way mm -hmm. right it's like you have to be strategic about how often you play a player like what his injury history is yeah. like if I was Philly and I know you're a Philly fan yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like so, um, you don't want to like you the low management I want like you know let, you, wanna, yeah. you let him chill a bit because <laughs> exactly. he's going to get injured yeah exactly yeah. when it comes to other players but yeah, yeah it's different yeah.